So hello everybody, I'm Ruth Sternberg and I am introducing you today to Kyle Palmer. Kyle wears a lot of hats and I invited him today because he founded a group here in Rochester, New York for young professionals who wanna get involved in community service. But I'm going to let Kyle say a few words about himself and then begin to talk to you about this topic. Take it away, Kyle. Awesome, thank you. Um, again, thank you, Ruth, for inviting me back uh, to talk about something different this time. Uh, I'm always uh, grateful to, to be back here with you and, and presenting, especially, um, you know, continue to provide valuable content for you to, to share with your community. And I appreciate yeah, so that. My, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Kyle Palmer. I am uh, located in Rochester, New York, actually a transplant from, uh, from Florida. I uh, moved here about 10 years ago, 10, 11, I don't know, 2010, so I guess going on 11 years now. And, uh, you know, through that, I've gone through a couple of career changes while being here in New York. Um, but I think, you know, to tell you a little bit about myself, like I said, I started off with a company called Cellular Sales. They're a large nationwide retailer for Verizon Wireless. Uh, a couple of years ago, I, I left there as I feel like I reached the pinnacle of my career with them. And then I uh, moved over to Expedia Group and worked with them for about a year and a half, uh, doing some account management stuff for a, comp for a group that they have or a, a company that they have called Egencia, which is their business travel arm. Um, but through both of those jobs, uh, I found that, you know, one of the biggest things that I kept, I guess, yearning for or looking for was a sense of uh, fulfillment. Uh, and that's, you know, kind of where the community impact was spun out of. I started to get involved in local networking groups in Rochester, New York. And then as I was talking and getting, you know, being a part of some of these networking groups, one, I started to learn very quickly that uh, I was one of the youngest ones in the room. Uh, and at the same time, I was hoping to try and attract more young professionals to networking, because I think networking especially is a, is a huge skill that people need to continue to learn and obviously adapt uh, to the different cultures. Obviously, we had to adapt this through, through COVID, so we obviously found a lot of us on doing a ton of virtual meetings. And that's how we, you know, we had to move our networking meetings from in-person to virtual. So they became a little bit more convenient, but I still continued to find that there were still not a, a large group of young professionals in the space. So what I did is I, I created a group called Community Impactors, it's pretty simple. Um, the purpose of the group is uh, to, to bring young professionals together to continue to learn how to network and um, through development workshops that we host as well. Uh, so teaching them some business skills such as networking, also really just being centered on and, and focusing on service back to their community. Uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today and kind of what, what's the importance of, yeah, oop, let me get my, here we go. What's the importance of, you know, community service when, you know, whether you are working for someone, you're employed by a, a corporation or whether it's working for yourself. I said, I found myself in multiple multiple times asking me or asking myself like am I doing enough to impact make the impact that I want to make while being on this earth so that could be you know when I was at you know previous jobs and sitting there and just pondering life as we sometimes do while we're sitting there aimless uh, looking aimlessly into the to the room uh just thinking about what what more could I be doing other than sitting behind this computer or other than repairing cell phones because that was the last program that that I had ran um previous to leaving my the Verizon retailer I was mentioning to you. So today is just going to be you know the hidden value behind community partnerships. If I can hit the right buttons here to move, there we go. So just kind of give an idea of what we're talking about. You know, again, uh, today's discussion points are going to be, you know, what is the value of the employer volunteer programs? Um, what are some employer and employee benefits to to getting involved in the community? What are some activities that you could be doing in ways that employers can get their employees involved. And if you're self-employed, ways that you can also get involved without having the, the assistance of your employer. So uh, what I kind of found when I was looking through these is, you know, like I said, the value of these volunteer programs. Um, now I don't, in the past, like I said, working for the two companies that I worked for, one, the first one, Cider Sales, which I worked for for 13 years, they had, so they had no uh, volunteer program that they actually coordinated. So if you wanted to do anything, you just had to go do it yourself. And it was, a, it was mainly a sales career. So if you took the day off to go do volunteer, you weren't getting paid for it. They weren't giving you a, you know, kind of a PTO day off for specifically for volunteering. 
So, you know, some of the things that I've, that I learned in the past couple of years, since I've been really trying to help my professional network understand the importance of community service is that, you know, some of the values behind them. So one, it's, you know, it's helping uh, employees feel a sense of purpose. Like I said, when I was going to work and I was managing the repair program and a couple other things that I was doing for the, for the different organizations, um, I didn't feel like I was doing anything for my community. When I created the repair program, I was like, great, I'm helping people fix phones, but what else am I doing? What real impact am I making in my community? Um, you know, attract new team members. When you're out in the community, when you're volunteering and, and as, a, as an organization or even as self-employed and going out there with your own, you know, maybe you have your own polo or your own branded shirt that you use for your business. You know, people like to see those types of things, uh, as far as, you know, whether it's other people that are volunteering the same day or the same shift that you're volunteering um, or, you know, as you're out with the particular program and some of the associates that work for those nonprofit organizations kind of inquire, you know, who knows who's looking for actual jobs and who's not looking for jobs. So we always have to kind of understand that maybe everyone's looking for a job. We don't know. So, and, you know, what they also found, too, is that you know, it boosts morale within the office. Uh, I think, like I said, if, if, they, if my companies could have done something as simple as setting up one day a quarter for me to kind of go and, you know, go, maybe it's, you know, go run a 5k, not that I would want to, I may sign up, I may not, but it may be as simple as going to pick up trash around the, around the area, maybe some of the county parks or getting involved in doing something like uh, one of the food pantries or volunteering with the, at the homeless shelter. So these are some things that, you know, that you can kind of set up for your employees to um, take advantage of and make them feel like they're, they're, they're actually, a part of the community and that they're giving back to the community. So this also gives the employees time out of office. I think we can all kind of relate to this over the past year and a half. We're technically out of office, but now we're stuck to our computers at home. So we don't ever really feel like there's a gap there for us to really go out of the office and do things in our community or just take a breather from work for a day while not having to worry about, am I gonna get paid or am I not gonna get paid for this? Um, not that getting paid for doing volunteering activities is important, but it's at least the day that you can submit for, you know, a paid time off. Um, you know, uh, another piece of it is, you know, just creating a more a pleasant work, work environment with, you know, maybe it's going to do something with your coworkers and also it helps increase that brand awareness, uh, that brand perception as well. You know, how are you representing your business in the community? And I think volunteering is huge. Uh, I, just put a little fun fact on the side too, which was my blind, like, dude, like, how do you put a value on uh, like an actual monetary value on volunteering. Well, uh, I found out that they actually do put a value on a monetary value on volunteering. And that value is $28 and 54 cents per hour. Um, this can be based off of obviously the work that's being done at the, these particular nonprofit organizations and kind of uh, given in like an, an average wage of what that would be. So this is kind of the amount of work that you take off the, off the hands for these nonprofit organizations that may be struggling to raise funds to support their programs um, and, uh, you know, be able to give their employers, their, their employees any uh, additional benefits as well. So again, what's the benefit, right? It's always a, when you, you kind of hear, you know, what's in it for me, right? That's always, it could be on the employer side or it could be on the employee side, you know, on the employee side, <clears throat> I mean, I've got them listed out here, but it's, yeah, I think from an employee side, again, like getting on the computer and like taking a day off, but not really like a day off, you can kind of still be hanging around with you, hanging out with your coworkers and doing something that's more meaningful. So it really gives you some time to recharge. And the best thing too, is that while doing that, you're kind of seeing a different operation, which helps you think about how to do your own work differently. Um, so it brings new creative ideas and innovative ways of thinking back into the workplace um, that they can kind of, you know, again, you're, you're seeing new people, you're, you're networking, you're meeting new people. Um, you're kind of seeing how operations are ran in different organizations, but it kind of gives you some insight into, you know, how could I could be doing my own process uh, differently. Um, also, it may entice those employees too to uh, continue volunteering elsewhere, whether it's, you know, whether it's something that the company provides or whether it's something that they decide to do on their own. Sometimes they just need the resources to find, um, to find these volunteering activities. I don't know. Uh, I know I've tried working with a company called Point App, which um, it's only in a few cities currently. I'm trying to work with a um, with someone from Point App as well to kind of bring it into Rochester to make it easier to find those volunteer activities. 
when you think about finding a volunteer activity right now, it's like, oh, I get to go specifically to that site and then find where they where they list their volunteer activities and how, you know, then I just, now I just got to go in there and sign up. But it's going to each one of those individual, whether it be somewhere like, you know, a major organization like Alzheimer's or whether it be like your local ASPCA or Humane Society, you're still having to go there and maybe pass a background check. Um, and then lastly is, you know, expanding their skills outside of the workplace. So taking those skills that they're learning in the workplace and maybe, you know, volunteering for nonprofit organizations and doing like a committee or um, board, uh, board role within the organization that brings your ideas into those organizations that, you know, maybe they're kind of limited on seeing because they can only afford um, to pay so much for their, you know, for their nonprofit employees. So maybe they're not finding necessarily the best talent to come in there, but maybe they can use someone, um, you know, like for myself, I, I do a lot of sales and marketing for my position. Me partnering with a, a couple of these different organizations has helped them kind of see things a little bit differently on maybe things that they could be doing in the future um, to help increase whether it be donations or whether it be um, finding new member or, you know, finding new members or committee or board members to, uh, to join the team. And then I see the other side of this for the employers, you know, Again, it's, op it's an opportunity for the members to, or for the employees to see each other face to face outside of work. They're able to develop friendships. So obviously, creating those friendships outside of work kind of helps that work relationship while they're in the job, uh, while they're at their you know, at the job day to day. It's great for team building. Um, I know sometimes you you find like, hey, listen, let's go do a happy hour. I actually found that doing happy hours are actually less uh, less effective than doing volunteering activities when it comes to a you know, a corporate uh, program or corporate reward, I don't want to say reward, but like getting the team to kind of unite and, and come together. Um, and again, you know, to, you know, for here's one for you, Ruth, that I just want to make sure I put in there too. It, it attracts job seekers uh, by being socially aware and supporting community efforts. Uh, I got some, I'll, I have some data in here as well that I'll show you that I'll share with you uh, that will help you understand kind of what that really means. Uh, and, and increasing employee retention. You know, I think now more than ever, I think employees are people that are job searching are looking for organizations that really um, are are looking to be a part of their communities, are looking to um, allow them, give them the resources to kind of uh, go out there and, and stand up for any causes that, and to support. Uh, I know, like I said, when I worked for Expedia Group, they gave us a bunch of different volunteering opportunities. They you know, they had these social awareness um, programs that, that you could get involved in. So I think it's great on keeping employees there. And if you wanted to keep, you know, if you want to keep your employer or your employees for, for the long term. So again, some of the data that I was talking about. Um, I think the interesting piece was, you know, 38% of the respondents say their employee, their employers provide access to the company sponsored or coordinated uh, program. So that's that's basically almost two out of the every five companies provide some sort of volunteering program. It's been proven that you know, with the, the previous three stats there, that, you know, almost almost seven out of 10 or almost three out of five um, people, you know, believe that being a part of volunteering activities helps boost the company morale. It helps, um, you know, it helps with the work environment. It helps them and improve their, their sense of purpose. So why isn't this something that, you know, companies or corporations are doing? I have a couple of my own ideas as to why that might be happening, but, um, again, there's really nothing to, to back those types of things. So the last piece too is, you know, only 30% of the resumes included any type of volunteering experience. So I, again, you know, maybe Ruth, do you have some insights on this? Do you, is this something that you see? I know you work with people on kind of transitioning to a different job or looking for a different job that may, that maybe that they're going to be happy in. Is this, are you seeing anything in, you know, when you're talking to your candidates or when you're talking to people that are utilizing your services, um, are they including any any types of these things on their resumes, or are they even being a part of uh, volunteering in any way? I'd say probably only about a quarter of people that I work with even think that this is something that is relevant. And so when I when I work with a candidate, I ask a lot of additional questions about work about professional history, and definitely I find that a lot of people have done pretty amazing things that because it wasn't paid work, they think don't matter. It absolutely matters. So I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah, and I could have I put in many more slides together 
um, which I wanted to be cognizant of everyone's time and they didn't want to spend 30 minutes presenting. So I want to do more of like a 15 to 20 minute time frame. So I just, I, there was a lot more that I could have dove into on this too, which was very interesting after doing the research on it. Um, and how many of of the people that actually do volunteering actually gain leadership skills from doing from volunteering in the community because um, they could be in charge of maybe it's just in charge of a project or maybe it's in charge of a team or coordinating so there's a lot of other skills that you can build outside of something that you may not have the ability to do at work right sometimes uh, at work you're not in charge of a team you're just in charge of your responsibilities you're reporting to someone else that's in charge of the team so this kind of gives them that little bit more sense of purpose and a little bit um, helps create those skills towards towards leaderships, which can in turn, um, you know, it can in turn come back into the organization to to help you know gain those leadership skills, and then they can start taking on you know small projects, leading into larger projects, and potentially leading into managing teams as well. So, you know, what types of involvement are, uh, can you get into? I mean, there's there's such a plethora of of the nonprofit organizations out there that need help, especially now. Um, again, I think that you know when it comes down to it, I mean, you can kind of see that the wages currently are being in, in, increased for people to get back into the actual the, the job world, the the and be placed into a job that they are feel like they're being paid enough for. And unfortunately, that's not something where nonprofits kind of excel at, right? They're they're working with a limited budget, so they need all the hands on and help that they can get. So just some ideas and um, you know places on the you know some of these I've I've uh, worked with, but uh, national organizations such as the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, Alzheimer's, the American Cancer Society, you name it. There's tons of national organizations that are national, but they also typically have like a local charter in your area that you can that you can participate with. It could be one. It could just be. Uh, you know, dealing with or not dealing with, but it, it could be setting up a small fundraiser, right? Just to raise money. You don't have to do anything like a 5K or a golf tournament or anything of that nature. You can just do something as simply as, hey, listen, you know, for the month of like this month, for instance, I'm raising money for Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. What that does is it, it helps you increase awareness. Like I knew nothing about cystic fibrosis going into this fundraising um, this fundraising month. So my job was to learn about cystic fibrosis and share that information with my network of people to help bring awareness and help them understand what it's like to live with cystic fibrosis. So it really could be that 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 small, or you could do something like I said, organize a golf tournament, uh, organize a 5K. Like I said, there's 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 many roles that you can kind of play on the national organizational level. And like I said, they're always looking for board members and committee members to help them um, organize and coordinate some of the events, some of these events as well. Um, there are also the areas. There are also areas, sure. if you don't mind. There are also areas of expertise that um, that you may have that you either are doing for as part of your job, or there are things you used to do, or you just know how to do that you might be able to do for them. Um, mm -hmm. I've been involved in several boards where I have actually helped um, craft fundraising strategies or write grants or do other things that help the organization. I've known people who've been uh, accountants who have been on the board of an organization so that they could help them a little bit get, get their finances organized, right? And, yeah. and monitor their budget. There's just yeah, so sometimes. many things you could be doing, you know? Right. Sometimes you have those skills and you just, you know, you can, you're like, oh, I can only use these skills at, at, in my job every day. Well, not really. I always tell people like when you're, you know, people are always looking at companies and I always worry about, well, if I leave this organization, then what do I do? I'm like, well, you don't understand that your skills are transferable. You can transfer those skills anywhere across any industry. It doesn't matter the type of industry it is. You can transfer those skills across the board. So, you know, taking those skills that you're utilizing on a day-to-day -day basis on your daily job and, and seeing how they can apply to some of these nonprofit organizations or, you know, some of these community-based organizations. Um, you know, a couple others that are listed on here. Obviously, I, I mentioned committee and board positions. Food banks, we have a local one called Foodlink that we work with. Um, then there's some, you know, those pro bono services. Again, like, you know, offering up your services, one to just... Yeah, as far as like it, maybe you're in marketing or maybe you're in sales or maybe you're uh, a staffing, uh, you know, you work in the staffing industry or field. Like these are some things that you can kind of bring into these organizations as well. Um, so these are just some some different types of involvement that you can do. Obviously, you probably have your own local nonprofit organizations or local community-based organizations that you can kind of um, check in with. 
And uh, to go on to the, to the next piece, like how do how do I get involved? How do I do this? Right. So there's all these organizations, but how do I actually get involved with them? It's actually easier than you think it is. So if you're if you're an employer, um, you know one of the things is that, you know considering offering that BTO, so volunteer time off. So this allows you know some of your employees to or not some, but it allows your employees to take a day off and dedicate it specifically to working in the community. They can do either something that they want to do or something that you you kind of uh, coordinate for them to work together on. Um, again, as an employer, coordinate some events. So whether it's 5Ks or uh, walks or happy hours for a cause, there's there's tons of things that you can do. Uh, you know, for instance, you know, I've, like I said, running community impactors, I've done a couple of things to this point where we've, you know, last month we raised money for, for Alzheimer's and it was simply just going to happy hour and all the tips that during the time that we were there were donated toward the Alzheimer's Association. Um, you know, find a community-based volunteer program. Uh, for instance, like community impactors, I think my, one of my goals with community impactors is getting it to a point where we can kind of be the intermediate, the volunteer program coordinator, uh, more or less for between the corporations and the nonprofit organization. So if a nonprofit organization is looking for help, then they can reach out to us and we can partner with some of the local companies and help find volunteers in their organization that care to be a part of something. And it could be based on their cause, right? For me, it's, uh, for me, it's the American Cancer Society. Uh, and just because through my childhood, my mother passed away when I was 11 years old. So that's something that's really important to me to make sure that I get involved and help other children that have been in the same um, and are having the same kind of life as I as I had growing up is just sharing that with them. Say, hey, listen, you know, sometimes you may think it's then like, OK, you know, my mother passed away. Well, that, that, how am I gonna, what am I going to do? How am I going to turn out? So sometimes they just need to hear that life isn't bad on the other side, you gotta can help them through that process. So that's personal to me and that's why I care to get involved. So when they talk about community, when my mother passed away, it, it was a community that helped raise me at that point. That's why I always find these community service and getting involved in a community so important because you never know how you can help someone. You never know doing something so small could go so far. Um, you know, connect your employees with groups who offer volunteering and development opportunities. Um, again, there's probably a lot of local uh, local organizations that you can connect with, um, but this is again, this is another piece that Community Impactors is trying to do as well. Is where we want to connect with local young professionals so that we can, um, you know, set up development opportunities for them so we can help them develop in their career while at the same time getting together and helping support our local nonprofit organizations and our community-based organizations. As an employee, or maybe you're self-employed. Um, like I said, it's really easy to kind of get involved with some of these organizations. Uh, and what I mean by that is that you can simply just reach out to their volunteer coordinator and they, or go to their site. It's pretty easy to, to kind of find like, hey, listen, what's what's coming up? Sometimes when they're doing these fundraisers, they do um, like they have a ton of people that are that are participating, but they're all holding their own small individual fundraisers. That's something that I learned quickly when I started diving into this. Like, hey, listen, we're, we're doing a fundraiser. Like, for instance, we're, we just got finished the, the longest day. Uh, which is an event held by the Alzheimer's Association. So many people were doing so many different things. Some it was just like, hey, listen, this guy's going to ride a, you know, this guy's going to ride a roller coaster for for ten hours because his brother he lost his brother from uh, from Alzheimer's and he loved the Jack Rabbit at at uh, Seabreeze, which is the local kind of theme park that we have here in Rochester. Some of them, like for me, I was trying to set up a home run derby. <laughs> Next year I'll probably go a little bit smaller scale with something like a you know backyard games. So we just have a backyard games tournament where we do like cornhole and washers and ladder ball. Some of these, some things that like when you go to parties over the summer, you think, oh, I'm gonna go play some cornhole and have some drinks or whatever it may be. So you really can do some stuff as, as small and large as that as you prefer. So they're just looking for people to get involved and help them raise funds to help them find a cure for those particular diseases. Um, also you can pack backpacks, it's another thing. Um, that we'll be doing here in the next, uh, 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 that actually we just set up for the past month. Um, I, you know, check out, again, check out Community Impactors. Uh, we're still working on the website. You can find us on LinkedIn, which I'll have the, the information at the end as well. Just kind of get an idea of what we're getting into. Um, and tell your, tell your colleagues, if you have someone else that you enjoy hanging out with and that you would like to go do something with um, and really kind of build that, that bond between you as well, you know, and invite your colleagues or uh, other people that you're in business with say listen i want to set up maybe you know maybe we go uh go 
volunteer at the ASPCA or Humane Society, um, help them walk dogs, take them outside, play with them, whatever, like I said, it could be as simple as that. Um, or it could be, hey, let's get a team together. Let's go run a 5K. Again, I'm probably not your guy for that. Um, it's really not my purpose to run 5Ks, much as I do enjoy running a little too old for these knees. Um, but like I said, this is just some of the simple stuff. And that's really all I have as far as presentation wise. The next piece is just kind of tell you a little bit about community impactors, our, our, our mission statement here, growing purposeful relationships with a mission to serve, um, service development, leadership, some of our contact information, which I'm always happy to, to answer any questions. Um, I'm continuing to build this. We, we started community impactors uh, last year in September. So we're in September now. So we're literally a year old, um, but started with a small group of our 10, of 10 people that were really committed to the cause. So we just continued to kind of branch out and invite new young professionals to the group and kind of get them involved in their local communities. So I know I covered a lot of information. Um, so I wanna say one, if you're still with us, which I hope everyone is, uh, one, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for spending the time uh, today and, and, and hearing about how you can kind of make a, make a difference in your own communities and kind of what that means for your employees as well and, and getting them involved and how you can make a bigger difference. Um, so with that being said, I'll, I'll leave it to Ruth. I know Ruth typically likes to, to kind of lead, you know, we like to have some sort of discussion as well as to, you know, what yes, does this really look I, like? You? I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here. Those of you yeah. who, who have been watching, um, I do want to encourage you to see what opportunities might be involved in your community and um, think about lending hands. And uh, remember, you can always reach out to me at Ruth at Confident Career Search for any questions that you might have. And also, Kyle, what's your email? Uh, my email is, uh, it was on the first slide there, but kyle.palmer at communityimpactors.org is how you can reach me. Um, I'm always happy to answer any questions. I'm always happy to, to network and make new relationships as well. Um, so like I said, any information that I can help provide for you, help steer you um, in, in, in creating that community effort. Again, I think there's, especially now more than ever, uh, due to the pandemic, more people need our help. And what they're finding is that they're having less people uh, volunteer than pre-pandemic. So yeah. they really they really are down when it comes to volunteering. Um, between volunteering and fundraising, I mean, you name it. Like I said, I think the nonprofit sector is really taking a hit right now. And it's it's really, it's, it, it, I was just having, a, I had it just, I had a networking meeting yesterday. And the first thing the guy says, hey, listen, I don't have, I don't have any money to like, to give to these organizations i'm like well let's let's understand th what the value is right right the value is not all the value is not always monetary right the value sometimes is time time is the value you could simply say hey listen i'm putting together a team to fundraise find three to five people to help you fundraise if you're not in a position to donate financially guess what you just recruited three to five people to help you raise funds and you didn't have to donate a dollar you, you donated your time to set that up to create that, that value for the nonprofit organization. They that call that time and treasure. Time and treasure. That's right, time or treasure. It's, it's all yeah. a gift, you know? Yep, so, you know, like I said, sometimes it's not, about mo it's not about money. It's about donating your time. You know, instead of watching three hours or you know, three hours of a Netflix movie, or you're watching an entire, binge an entire season for God's sake, or that's an entire day. Um, you could literally be making a difference out in our communities and, and just reaching out to some of these local nonprofit organizations yes. or community-based organizations. So it really thank, is that simple. You. There's oh. nothing complex. <laughs> thank you so much, Kyle. I so appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording here.